So, what significant events happened there for us? Let's see. I graduated twice. Are you alive already? Yeah. <gasps> <I'm sorry. laughs> but it's not technically time. But anyway, so we graduated. That was something that happened to us there. We, we went to junior senior. We went to junior senior banquet. We found each other at CBC. Let's see what else happened. We had our first child while we were at CBC together. I met my I met lifelong friends. Japheth being the best of those. Let's see, what else happened at CBC? Super important to our lives. One of my favorite testimonies happened while I was there. It was when I, you know, I paid my way the whole time and, and I really felt like I needed for doing my ministry internship, I felt like I wanted to go to in Inglewood in California in the city. Um, and I knew that if I went and did that, then I wasn't going to be able to work at all. And I wouldn't have, I would have to go and get some debt um, to go back my senior year. Um, but I just felt like I was supposed to do that. And it was, whoa, hello, culture shock for this mountain girl. And uh, very challenging, but a really good experience for me for a time. Um, and then when I, uh, at the end of the semester, after all my plans were already made, I found out I was getting a full scholarship for uh, for one semester of my senior year. That just really blessed me. And I was like, Lord, you just came right through. And I actually ended up with less loans from that year than other years. <laughs> Well, I had my whole way pretty much, well, I had a loan, but I think my whole way pretty much was paid one way or another. And then, uh, CMF, lots of CMS, ser CMF services. Uh, who's our favorite teachers? Dr. O's and Dr. Nunnally. Dr. O's. I didn't have Dr. O's. I liked him from afar, I guess, but I didn't have him. Then, uh, I like Dr. Nunnally. Oh. Dr. David Watson was oh, yeah. my absolute favorite. -ist. I like several others. Um, Dr. Holden. We're not going to talk about any that we didn't like. Actually, I don't know that there's any I absolutely didn't like. Sometimes I didn't appreciate the classes so much. Sometimes I uh, wasn't my favorite personality. Didn't mean I dislike them. If you put your hand there, that would be better. That, that's much better. Do that. Anyway, so those are those guys. It's almost six, I think. Oh, one minute till. So people might, I don't know if it'll make people come or not be at six, but that's what it says. It's, it starts. The link I sent out, it, this officially starts at 6 p.m. So what does it say it's live about? I don't know how this stuff works. So when you're going to go live, uh -huh. you can schedule it uh -huh. and it will, uh, I, I still think you have to tap live. It might go automatically live. I think you actually have to tap it. But uh, you schedule it, that way people have time to see that you're going to go live and come to it at the time that it says it's going to go live. I think most people just come when they see it, it says you're live. But anyway. Uh, we're already live. Or we're coming we are live and now at 6 o'clock and more people oh. will know that we're live according to the post that I put. Of course, I don't know how many people are seeing the posts, but... Anyway, so we're live right now. CBC. So, uh, my first year I got in a room for th with a bit, it was one of the big rooms in Welch, and it had three 
room. I had three roommates, and uh, oh, two, two roommates. Three, there were three of us, and then one left, and then the other one left. I had it all to myself for a bit, and then later, I, when I came back, they moved me to my another room. But I did have a room, and I had a roommate. But then he left, and I had that room to myself. It was a much smaller room, but still. So the three, the three man bedroom had its own bathroom. So I had a big, huge bedroom and my own bathroom. Quite nice. It was good, good times. I lived in Welch my whole whole CBC career until we moved to married housing. But okay, so let's see. Best CMF. You have a best CMF. Really, the only CMF I remember outstanding is the one where you wore my clothes as a. In a oh, it was, was my costume for uh, uh, Inner City. I the, I decided for that the bonfire. <laughs> I, I I began to like you that year, uh, and uh, so you were it was looking. So nice of you to love me your costume. You were looking for gangster clothes, <laughs> so you could dress like you were the Inner City person. And so you thought baggy clothes would be good. So we could really do that right now, probably. But anyway, uh, you some baggy clothes with like a, a flannel type shirt. Anyway, then I got Marshall to spray. Well, did you want? I don't know what you're talking about. Perfume. I don't know why you're I got Marcel to spray. I think I got. I don't know if I actually did or not, but I was thinking somehow I got some of your perfume on their clothes. I don't have no idea about it. You that. don't know, got it, because I didn't tell you. I didn't wear perfume, so I don't know how you would have got any of my. Well, I think Marcel just gave me some, but I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. That's that's. I have this memory. Well, of I it. remember whenever I borrowed. Uh, Maybe it's just your natural from, smell. I think was a teener. No, from, I oh, wanted to know. I did make that up. Anyways, I borrowed a piece of fabric to, get, to wear for the CMF bonfire for my costume when I was a parent leader. And then when I washed it, I washed it with my white clothes because it looked like a sheet and it turned all of my white clothes yellow. <sighs> oh, very memorable. <laughs> of course, I sat out that, that, that one year because I didn't do I didn't go to some of my classes, and uh, yeah, I just sit out a year. That's the year that my, either the year or the next year that my dad died. Next year, it would have been the next year my dad died. And uh, not next school year, but the next year. Did you have any classes in the old music building? Nope. I oh, think it was no, torn down. You came the first, you came the first year 94. of that old music building about roasted me to death at 7.25 in the morning. And it's really hard to stay awake at 7.25 in the morning with a full belly in a roasting classroom. Now, Japheth that I, well, no, it's, uh, <laughs> we went down to the, we were, I don't know, we were kind of very fresh freshmen. And uh, there was these two girls, like, I guess we were going to if it really were or not. But anyway, we went down to the music rooms in the Zimmerman building with them. I don't know what we, I mean, they were together. There was something um, terrible, but we went down there with them and, and were talking with them and stuff. And Anyway, they weren't, I don't, they must have been somewhat interested, to, or maybe they were just more just the excitement of being in college and it's interesting. I don't know. I really don't know what the thought process. I just have this vague memory of that going down there and talking to him in the in the, in the piano rooms downstairs because he was there for a second. So, what about the mud? What were you doing that you covered yourself in mud? Well, Play. I just had to take a break. You know, I was studying for some tests on a Wednesday night, and I 
I wasn't even thinking about it being Wednesday night. But anyways, I took a break uh, and went for a walk and I found the most lovely clay. It, it's super creamy looking mud. I, ha I had to pick it up. I made myself a lovely ball and it was bright orange. So I, you know, carried it around this ball of mud with me while I was walking. And then when I got back to my room, I had this piece of fabric that I uh, brought because it looked like something from a foreign country or something. So I, uh, I said to my roommate, what do you think if I paint myself into a, a native? So I painted myself with mud all over and wrapped myself up with that. And then I, uh, I went running through the dormitory ran around with, with that mud on and the uh, other interview on our video. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, the ballet ground was they were funny. So, let's see, what else funny or there was always the the pretty in the hills. That's always a fun one to remember. Talking about collections actually had a good impact on me because when I read that and think about it, I think about that that sermon. Well, I remember whenever I had Dr. Ose for hermeneutics, and listening to him, he was really trying to convince us that we did not want to go around flinging Greek and Hebrew words around and try to make it like where, you know, you have to know these things in order to get the word, you know, you have to, like, he, um, and I really, and I was there as a biblical languages major because I wanted to be a Bible translator, a missionary Bible translator, and then um, I was like, huh. And then it turned out that the next year, Dr. Oz was my Greek professor because Dr. Holton got called up for active duty. <laughs> anyway, it was just funny. I don't know if I understand that. Well, I thought that he didn't even, like, value the oh, knowledge of okay. Greek or something. So. Like, he was making a point. I understood the point that he was making, and I really got it. But at the time, he made it so well that I thought that... He was anti he the was, Greek he language. He was like, you don't need that. You know, there's good tools. There's good translations. Like that. That's funny. That it was funny. funny when I was like, what? He's going to be my Greek professor? Okay. It's interesting because there's a lot of people that still think that well still think that there's a lot of people that think that you have to have like Hebrew especially Hebrew Hebrew people are the worst because <laughs> they're like you got to have the Hebrew because you just don't get it unless you have the Hebrew and there is definitely some nuances that you uh, get from from knowing it knowing it well but the problem is a lot of people I mean, you really, you can't just know the language and therefore you have all this instant knowledge. You get that knowledge from other tools and the other tools are, it's very, anyway. So, when, you Hebrew people, you Hebrew scholars, just chill a little bit, just a little bit. Alright, so, Oceana is a Hebrew scholar, she just doesn't do it anymore. She should. She got sumo cum laude. She was number two in her class, I believe. No idea. I'm pretty sure. Almost definitely. That she was sumo cum laude. She was definitely sumo cum laude. But I think she's number two in her class. I don't want to say that. I don't think it's true. I think it is true. How would you get that information? Because I was sitting there looking at the paper when you graduated. Yeah, I didn't say that. Or else I would know it. But I know it. Anyway, so it's my word. Oceano was second in class, or something like that. Anyway, so believe it, believe it. So it doesn't matter. But she doesn't use it now, so she's not anymore. It's probably some in some person that didn't even take biblical languages in that class that now is the number one Bible translator. She was going to do it, but then she just... Okay, let's change this. Okay, we're changing the script. All right, so what else could we talk about that happened at CBC? 
Fort Leonard Wood. Oh yeah, Fort Leonard Wood is a big one. That's really impacted me, I think. I don't think I would have went back a second here if I hadn't been part of that team there where I had people around me. <laughs> Fort Leonard Wood was amazing. So the most memorable one, we actually took recording. So every week we had no idea how, who, how many were going to be there. And uh, so sometimes there was one or two and other times there were hundreds. The most we decided we were going to do a, a promo, promotional video for Fort Leonard Wood Ministries, and we brought the, you got ready, we're ready to record. And when we brought the stuff, it was packed. It was so packed. Russ Connor, Russell Connor was preaching, and he preached about that same Jesus that ascended into heaven. Anyway, that. We got that on the recording. So many people came to Jesus that day, uh, got saved, rededicated their lives. It was just an amazing day. And it was, uh, you know, that was very memorable. But all the, actually, all the uh, Fort Leonard Wood services were, to me, I, I loved that ministry. I loved it. I was able to, I personally was able to preach the gospel and see people get saved and, you know, and, and lead, pray with people, lead people to the Lord in a way that I really hadn't done early in my life, but didn't have the opportunity. We're in a very small church, so we might have one-on-one -on -one and seen people saved, but just not on that level and that magnitude all at once. So it was definitely something for me um, to be a part of that just a great ministry all the way around. I really loved it. Uh, I would do that today if I had opportunity. But um, anyway, that was great. Um, what did you remember about Fort Leonard Wood? I remember visiting with, uh, with the team on the way there and back every yeah. week. Well, always we stopped at McDonald's and always we stopped at Taco Bell afterwards. Taco Bell on the way, or McDonald's on the way there, Taco Bell on the way back, and that's when they had the Choco Taco. The Choco Taco. I have no idea why restaurants take away things that are amazing, but they got rid of the Choco Taco. I don't think they have it anymore at all, and that's why Taco Bell has went downhill since that time, since the late 90s. So anyway, early, well, mid to late 90s, yeah. So anyway, there's that. Anything else that was really, any sermons that really impacted you besides the one you already said? I wrote some quotes down, but one of the ones that stuck with me the most of, see, the one that stuck with me the most of everything was, uh, when you study the word, you have to study it for application in your own life. Because knowledge, not for knowledge, because knowledge puffs up. It was Wayne, yeah. somebody or other. I haven't written in my Bible bio, my verse last name. Anyway, that's definitely I remember somebody else preached about uh, how is it you don't want to be uh, I'm gonna say a performer or something pleasing other people you don't want to be an artist pleasing yourself you want to be uh, I don't remember the other thing but, but the part that I really stuck with me was I don't want to be an artist pleasing myself because really that's my nature <laughs> I'm like I don't I'm not a performer for other people but yeah I gotta maybe remind myself that maybe pleasing myself isn't the only goal. What about funniest moments? <laughs> I remember when we uh, stuffed a, a we put a suit of clothes together and stuffed it with the dirty laundry and threw it out the window and tried to freak somebody out. <laughs> Also, I watched somebody out the window once. I guess that person was a prankster, and some other people got a hold of her and plastic wrapped her to a chair, and they poured a bunch of honey and a whole bunch of stuff all on her hair. And stuff. That was pretty funny, too. Yeah. Also, it was pretty funny when Marcia went home for Christmas, and then when she came back, she <laughs> forgot where she was, and she grabbed somebody after at chapel when she was going in for the chapel service and she grabbed somebody and kissed him on both cheeks. <laughs> I didn't see it. Which would be perfectly fine 
I personally think we ought to go back to that. Just kind of go anti-COVID and just start kissing again. It was a male person. Anyway, so, yeah. I don't know. I know what am I... I enjoy playing a little fun thing to remember. I've never had a surprise birthday party. I've had birthday parties, but surprise birthday parties anyway she blindfolded me and took me to they took they all took me to walmart there's a group they took me to walmart they bought some stuff while we were there but i was blindfolded the whole time then they took me to a park and we played with the big red bat and well, i i was unblindfolded at the park i guess that what did you make did you oh, make I know. another funny Someone thing that happened another funny thing that happened is that So you discovered can openers and that changed your world. It did. Uh, so I started getting like, you know, chili beans and... So instead of ramen noodles. Green beans Although I thought ramen better. noodles, you know, we could live on ramen noodles. Yeah, I like ramen Especially noodles, if but I didn't want to eat it every single time. Like macaroni and cheese Oh, it was so nice and whenever we started going to church with the camels and, and then we would go to Burger King afterwards and I'd have to have ramen noodles that year. Yep. Yeah. So we went to... Every Sunday night after church, it wasn't Sunday night, it was Sunday after church. We'd go every time, we'd go get Whoppers, dollar Whoppers at, <laughs> at Burger King. Remember those days when Whoppers were a dollar instead of five dollars? I think it was you buy one and you get one. Yeah, anyway, so, but yeah, but you got them for nothing. Anyway, uh, the Campbells have bought us Whoppers for our whole, <laughs> well, we weren't even married yet. We were. That was when I was still trying to woo you. But we went to Central Assembly. That's when Dr. Watson was pastor. Right? Yeah. I'm a little confused about it now, though. Because if I was trying to woo you, was he pastor? When I was trying to woo you? Because he was pastor when we were still married, right? He must have been pastor for a while. To tell you the truth, I don't remember who was the pastor at the time. I just remember that I went to church there. And that I went to church there when he was the pastor. Uh, yeah, I'm a little confused because I think he became pastors later. Pastor later. I do remember going to Dr. Nunnally's Sunday school class and I yeah. hear internship and they gave us a diaper shower. My favorite ba baby blanket that we got was wrapped around a package of diapers as the wrapping. <laughs> yep. So that's nice. That was good. So Central Assembly. We didn't go to the big churches. I didn't go to big churches most of my time there. I went to little churches so I could be involved and help out but at that point we start going there so let's see what else would be good to talk about that happened so we did funny stuff we did what was your greatest worship moment sometimes but i always would rather just hang around afterwards and the more soak in the presence CBC was really cool because most of the time, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people that didn't want to be in chapel service and there was, you know, you hear a lot about the, I mean, you hear about people not wanting to be there basically, you know, it's not that they didn't want to be at CBC, but they didn't want to be at you the, must have hung around the wrong people. well, no, I, I didn't actually hung around them, I just, you know, when I heard people talk about it, I was surprised that they were like that, but, uh, but actually, it was amazing the worship when everybody just started singing it was the most so i always grew up in this tiny tiny church pretty much a family church and having all those people there just worshiping boom so many full on um full on worshiping that i i didn't really experience that so i had experienced it some but every day you go into chapel and they start singing and it's it's on i mean i'm sure there were some more than others but i just remember like they sing an old hymn and bam worship you can feel the worship or they sing something new boom you can feel the worship it it, it was amazing um, the worship was definitely one of the i in the, the chapels i liked best were the senior chapels 
and that might just be my own thing, but I always felt like the senior chapels were. You know, the most memorable the, the, chapel for they me, impacted me of all the chapels I ever saw was a children's ministry one, and they did puppets and like the lights dark, and they and they did some really wild song with that one. Manamana. Manamana. Mana. <laughs> yeah, I can't sing it because I might get it. But uh, I think it was B in the Light was the other one or something. Yes, B that was. Light. I think they were doing some podium. They were trying to stall, or they were doing something and they were trying to stall. Fun, well, anyway, it was a great sermon. I love that one. Uh, what else? Uh, well, I said senior chapels were my favorite, but I also loved it when the professors spoke because the professors were super impactful as well. So senior chapel, and I loved it. Some of the guys, the the senior, the students that led worship or or played uh, Benny Benny Ferguson when he played the organ, mm, good stuff. Um, I, love the, I I I really enjoyed the CBC late night. What was it? It was not Saturday Night Live is what they were doing, but it, it wasn't called Saturday Night Live. It was called something else. But anyway, I love that thing. That was great. Always wanted to climb the the bell tower, but I can't climb anything, trees or anything. So, what else is what else was good about CBC? You said the pond. I think you said that before it even came on. Oh, I don't know if we ever. I I said that one of my favorite CMFs was the one where you dressed up, but, but that wasn't just because of that. It was also because the bonfires. I thought I the bonfires to me were super impactful um usually they just went an extra level on those ones um i don't know if they had different speakers one or thing what, that but... has had a lasting impact on me is that whenever i i was part of uh world prayers on friday night before that cmf service and um i was the prayer leader a couple like my sophomore and junior years and um